Hello. So we continue today talking about our sun and its energy production and how energy transports from the interior of stars out to the surface and then to eventually fly away in space. And so just to break this up, what we do know is right in the interior of our star called the core is that within the core that's where all the energy is formed of the sun. So all the energy is formed here. And in a different video, what we've done is we have actually listed basically how that energy is formed through something called the proton-proton chain. And so that's where it's formed and what comes out of this are extremely powerful light photons called gamma rays, which we've talked about also. And they pass into a region of space that is right above the core. And in this region, we call it the radiation zone, the rad zone. And so the radiation zone is where energy is transporting in the in this region in the process of very high powerful light rays and so in the radiation zone is cooler than the core so there's not any possibility of new energy forming there all this happening is that energy is transporting through there and so it's done so in the form of light, and that's why it's called the radiation zone. And so what happens in the radiation zone is that we have atoms of hydrogen and helium and trace of heavier atoms. And what occurs is that out of the core, gamma rays come in to that radiation zone, and they get absorbed immediately by an atom. Now, atoms don't like that additional energy because it means they're at a higher energy state than what nature likes. Nature always likes things to be as low of energy as possible. So because that atom has absorbed energy, it's now at a higher energy state. And so to reduce it back to where it was, energy is emitted and then immediately absorbed again. So we get absorbed energy, we get emitted energy to be reabsorbed. And again, just like it was before, now that atom has too much energy. So it is emitted and absorbed and emitted and absorbed. And so this one gamma, uh, one gamma ray, this one photon of gamma ray radiation is emitted and absorbed and basically randomly moves toward the surface of the radiation zone. So it comes in and just bounces around. It bounces for a long time in there. It may take between 100,000 to a million years for energy to actually escape that region. So when you go out on a nice sunny day, look at that, and what you'll observe of that light coming from the sun is actually very ancient. It was formed within the core between 100,000 to a million years ago until it finally made it out of that region. Now, as you move away from the core of a star, it gets cooler and cooler and cooler. And so we now pass into another region where it's so cool that now what happens is that energy transports through this way in a process much different than with radiation. It's not light. And this region is known as the conduction zone. Excuse me, what am I saying? It's actually called the convection zone. I'm sorry. It's the convection zone. So in the convection zone, another name of this is boiling. And so this is the boiling of the sun. Now, if you've ever stood over a pot boiling water, what you see is this roiling action of water rising up, steam flowing away, and then the water dropping back down. 
And so what really happens in this region, let me show you, as the energy makes it out of the radiation zone and it passes into the convection zone, it heats up the gases there. And so that heated gases is hotter. Because it's hotter, it expands in volume. Now, if it expands in volume, what it means is that the, its mass density is lower. So, expands in volume, the mass density is lower. So, what happens with that gas is kind of like what would happen if you went to a swimming pool and you go to the bottom and re you would release a ping pong ball. What, what would it do? And I think you know it would rise up. And the reason why it would rise up through the water in the swimming pool is simply because its mass density is less than water, and it rises up. And so does this. And as it does, it carries energy with it. And that energy then can flow out in through, out into the solar system, providing the heat and light that makes life possible on the Earth. Now, what happens is that it cools off that gas, and now because it's cooler, it contracts in volume, contracts, and it's higher density. So what happens is if I go to that swimming pool, and I go ahead and I put a rock on it, what would happen if it dropped back down? It goes back down, and it continues to be heated again. And so... In this region, what happens is the hot stuff rises, cool stuff drops, and it just keeps roiling around like boiling of water. And so in this region, the convection zone, actual sun stuff is actually rising and falling, carrying the energy with it, whereas down in the radiation zone, the sun stuff just bounces around randomly but it's light that carries it. And one last thing about this, it'll only take roughly 10 days to two weeks for the hot stuff to rise up and then to drop down and then move that energy into the solar system. And so that is what's known for the sun as energy transport. Okay, guys, that's it for this talk on energy transport or movement within stars. Take care, guys. I hope everything's clear. Let me know.